homesteading, to prepping, to common horse sense, we are College Hill Farm. Welcome back to College Hill Farm. Well, I was plowing, hoeing out my peppers behind me. Got them all hoed out, both rows. And But I did notice something's going on with the tomatoes. And I want to show you about it because uh, let's talk about tomato pests a little bit. Now, there are a few plants in your garden that bugs just don't bother much. Tomatoes are one of them. Onions are another. Now, some people have problems with white fly on their onions, but I haven't had that problem. Uh, never had that problem in 47, 48 years of gardening. So I've never had the white fly problem with onions. I've never had to spray pesticide on onions. Okay, I practice uh, rotation. I don't put light crops in the same place two years in a row. There's generally between three and four years between placement. Well, I should say two and three years if you think about it. So I try and rotate everything around in my gardens so that I'm not planting the same thing twice and that helps me keep the pest load down. Uh, tomatoes are prone to a few pests. Uh, the tobacco hornworm and the tomato hornworm. That's one. Uh, you can get a bunch of those on your tomatoes and, and uh, they'll wear them out. But you know, you can pick them off. They're not a, they're not a big deal. You can take care of it organically. You can, there's not a problem. Those, those are generally not a problem here, or at least at College Hill Farm they're not, and not in the last 47 years that I've grown tomatoes. Uh, 47 or 48, anyway. Uh, leaf hoppers get on your tomatoes. Uh, blight is a problem. You know, they can get uh, early blight and a late blight and, and hurt the tomatoes. Blossom in rot's a problem, and I'll show you how to deal with that probably in this upcoming week. Uh, Blossom in rock can be a problem, uh, but this is a problem that you don't see a whole lot of. That it happens though, and it especially happens this year because my my potatoes haven't come up. Uh, we had a heavy freeze. I had a good crop of potatoes up, but on May the 11th we had a freeze down to like 24 degrees. Uh, it burnt my my uh, cauliflower pretty bad but it's coming back and it stunted my broccoli some but it came back and the cabbage said I don't care it don't bother me uh, but my potatoes killed them off to the ground now I've never had potatoes do that before uh, this is an odd year for me 48 years of gardening I've never had a freeze kill them like that I've had it burn them a frost burn the top of them but I've never had it kill them off to the ground like that it's kind of odd so I want to show you what's happening to our tomatoes now leaf hoppers can get on your tomatoes and if one of your tomatoes has a virus and they generally get that from the from the seed you sow if you've got a virus in your tomato patch get that baby out of there as quick as you can and spray for the leaf hoppers because their little sucking mouth parts dig in and they can transfer the virus from plant to plant. So when you pull that infected plant out, those infected leaf hoppers are still around. They'll get on another plant. Okay. So if you get if you get up one plant with a virus, pull that out and spray some kind of uh, pesticide to get rid of those leaf hoppers because they'll infect other plants in your row. Now let's go down and look and see what the tomatoes are doing. Right here, right here's one I'm going to show you. That is the larva of a Colorado potato beetle. That's a full grown larva. Here's some younger ones. And there's some younger ones. I don't see any beetles. This is just the larva. So, what am I going to do with those? Well, I'm going to take a bucket. Oh, take a bucket and put it right here. I hate to do this all bent over, but it's just going to happen. 
and those and all these little black things that's on here are going in the bucket. I'll start off picking them off because these things are resistant to just about every kind of control. There's only a couple of things out there that'll kill them. See, just that one plant. Oh, there's another one. Thought I saw another one. There it is. Right there's one. Now they'll get on two or three tomatoes in a row. See, here's another one. Well, I can't get to him. He's gonna die the old fashioned way. Okay, another one. Now I'll go down through here down the whole row and pick them off. Okay, see there they are in the bucket. Now, they'll do this to your plants. They'll make them wilt a little bit. The big hefty plants can generally take it a little, but see here, this one's got some damage. See, they're laying it to this one. Get these babies off here. Just put the whole thing in there. I know pruning that back, pruning them leaves off, you're going, you're killing your plant. No, not really. It'll come back. Okay. Okay, I've hand picked off a bunch of these babies. Uh, I didn't see any beetles. Now I assume, and, and I don't know, I might be completely wrong here. But I'm just assuming. You know what assume does. It makes a, something out of you and me. But anyway, I assume that uh, somehow these larvas overwinter uh, or the seed overwinters in the ground. It's the only thing I can figure because the the potato beetle larva is the first thing you see in the spring. You don't see the beetles. Now I try and pick these babies off so that they don't become beetles. I don't want the larva to pupate and become a beetle and get out here and have sex in my garden and lay eggs. I try and keep that from happening as much as possible. At this larval stage, if I had to spray them with something, in the very first early stages, larval stages, they're susceptible to some pesticides. But once they make it up to the great big old fat larva, and then they make it to the, to the uh, beetle stage, they are not susceptible to most pesticides. Uh, I've got one pesticide that I resort to only if the potatoes or the tomatoes can't take the beetle load. Uh, because I don't want them to become resistant to it too. So, now if you like this stuff, this homesteading, this do-it-yourself kind of lifestyle, be certain to come on out to the channel and subscribe. We do this homesteading stuff every week, sometimes one, sometimes five videos. Just depends on what's going on in the homestead that week. If you hit the little bell, it'll notify you when we upload a video. We upload every Sunday. Now with that being said, it's time for me to get on to the next thing and assassinate some beetles. Goodbye, Ringo.